Hello friends and welcome again to Letter from Lockdown. We're continuing to look at Philippians, Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, which he wrote from his own lockdown when he was in prison. We've reached chapter 2 and verse 14, but before I read that to you, let me share with you a little bit of an article that I enjoyed immensely. This is a brief article by Elizabeth Elliot, and it's called Several Ways to Make Yourself Miserable. Number one, count your troubles, name them one by one. Number two, worry about something every day. Don't let yourself get out of practice. Number three, pity yourself. If you do enough of this, nobody else will have to do it for you. And the article goes on in similar vein. Well, the reason that I'm reading that to you is because I think she would have approved very much of what the Apostle Paul says to us here in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14. Paul writes, do everything without grumbling, complaining, or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. It is hard work living with somebody who constantly complains. <laughs> Just ask my wife. I'm still working on contentment and I suspect that you are too because these are lifelong lessons. I think we would probably all be horrified if we could hear how much we ourselves complain, but we tend not to hear our own complaints. We hear the complaints of other people, and that annoys us. Well, if you're enduring lockdown with a bunch of complainers, one person who would sympathize with you is Moses. And it's the story of Moses that Paul is referring to here in Philippians chapter 2. In fact, in verse 15, he quotes from that story. Moses had been charged by God with leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and taking them to their new home in the land of Canaan. Along the way, these thousands of Israelites complained so much that Moses ended up wishing he was dead. Perhaps you felt like that sometimes when people have been complaining on and on at you. Well, God was not very pleased with these Israelites either. In fact, he sentenced them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until the last of that complaining generation had died out. Moses called the Israelites of his day, and this is what Paul quotes there in Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, he called them a warped and a crooked generation. Though they had a heavenly father who loved them, and provided everything they needed, they behaved as though they were orphans with no one to care for them. Now, it's important to understand that that is why they were condemned by God. They were not condemned because they were weak. We're all weak. Jesus died for people who are weak. They were condemned not for being wimps. They were condemned for being unbelievers. Get that very clear in your mind because it's become fashionable in our society to say to those who are complaining, oh, suck it up, buttercup. Well, that expresses our annoyance, but it also hints at our arrogance. It's as though we're saying to people, you should be tough. In fact, like me, I'm tough. I've got my act together. Why don't you? But that is not what Paul is saying here, and for a very good reason. As the self-styled tough ones will one day discover, they aren't nearly tough enough. They're not, not that much tougher than the rest of us. The great leveler is death. When God calls time on them as on everybody else, it will be over for them. They will not be tough enough. The psalmist in Psalm 103 puts it like this, the wind blows over us and like flowers of the field, like buttercups, we are all gone. We're all in the same boat. We are all frail creatures dependent on God for every breath that we take 
and we are arrogant fools if we forget it. No, the Israelites' problem was not that they weren't tough. Their problem was they weren't trusting God. And because of that, they weren't thankful to God. And so they lived just like everybody else. Here they were, the people of God. They're supposed to be different, but they're just like everyone else. And what Paul says to us here in Philippians chapter 2 is, be different. The way that you will shine like stars in a dark world is not by being like everybody else, not trusting in God, complaining, demanding, arrogant. The way you will shine like stars is by being different, by, by living as people who know God's goodness, who trust in him, who have grateful hearts, who count their blessings rather than their troubles. Now, how do you become that kind of person? Well, the answer is not suck it up, buttercup. The answer is repent and believe the gospel, because when we truly do that, it changes our life. We begin to rely not on our own toughness and resourcefulness, but on God's trustworthiness. We stop being arrogant and demanding, and we become thankful. And then we will shine like stars in a world that has lost its way. Let's pray. Father God, forgive us our ingratitude. Make our whole lives an offering of praise and thankfulness for all your kindness to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. Bye for now.